大家好，我是上官杰文 ，Your friendly neighborhood Y Y R N. As many of my fans know, I am from the United States. The United States loves to shake its fingers at others and say, "What about your human rights? What about your human rights?" Well, this is going to be the first of many in a feature about America and their human rights problems. From 1492, with the arrival of Christopher Columbus and the discovery of North America by Europeans. There were maybe 10 or 15 million indigenous people living in North America, and by the end of the 19th century, there were 200,000. What happened to these 14 million 800,000 people? They were killed by European settlers and Americans, and this has been going on as recently as 1986. In some cases, and depending on how you look at it, it is still going on. Let's take. Just some examples of the way that these people were wholesale slaughtered by their European usurpers, the people who came and usurped them from their own continent and their own home. In 1782, Christianized Native Americans—that means Native Americans who had been converted to Christianity and from Delaware—were caught and murdered two at a time, sent into a copper store where they were beaten to death. And this included men, women. And children from 1830 to 1840, under what is known as the Trail of Tears, an act was passed by Congress to remove Native Americans from settlements across the Mississippi. Many of these people traveled during the winter, and thousands and thousands of them died. They were removed from land that was given to them by the United States of America. So, firstly, these people were given land. By the United States and the U.S. Army, and said you can live in this place. And they were told, as an act of faith by Congress, in the decades preceding 1830, this is your land. And then, because they were living on land, the United States decided that it wanted for white settlers to go live and grow crops for their country, for the nation, for the United States. They decided to move these people, and in the process, killed a huge portion of them. In December of 1890, the U.S. Army attacked a large、uh, settlement village of Native Americans in the hundreds, killing women, men, children, everyone, wiping entire villages out in South Dakota. Twenty U.S. Army servicemen. Received U.S. medals of honor. They were given medals of honor for murdering families. In 1763, the commander of British forces, this is before the United States was founded, under King George II, were ordered to find all of the fastest ways to erase Native Americans from the continent, so British colonists could come over and take that land. In an attempt to facilitate these executions, this wholesale slaughter of the indigenous Americans living there, Colonel Henry Bouquet laced or took smallpox-infected blankets, folded them up, and gave them as gifts to indigenous Americans, so that they would get smallpox. And having not been used to European diseases, it would wipe them out. And this killed thousands of Native Americans through the gift. Of blankets, so literally families were receiving blankets as a present that were wiping their families out. On the orders of King George II, in order to facilitate the extermination, the genocide—same thing that Hitler did to the Jews—genocide, the genocide of the Native Americans under British forces before the United States was founded, King George II would pay out 50 pounds, which was an enormous sum, for the scalp. The top of the head to be cut off a dead or dying Native American male. Twenty-five pounds for an adult female, and twenty pounds for the scalp of children upon bringing those to a British fort. So anyone who was a white settler from England, from Britain, who was living in North America at that time, who wanted some money, could just go and murder indigenous Americans and cut off part of their head and turn it into a fort for the kind of money that they needed to buy farm tools and other things. The first governor of California, a Peter Burnett, insisted that the war between the races continue. "Quote: War of extermination will continue until the Indian race has become extinct." And an act passed on April 22, 1850, facilitated the enslavement of Native Americans in the state of California at that time. So this act 
passed in, on April 22nd and 9th, in 1850, facilitated white settlers from mostly Western European nations to any time they found Native Americans to just take them, to take their children, whatever, and use them as slaves. And this was actually called the Act for the Government, Government and Protection of Indians. At the same time, you probably heard the term 49er, if you haven't, 49er means the people who rushed to California from 1849 on looking for gold. Gold miners, in an attempt to find more land where they could pan for gold and mine for gold, would round up Native Americans and kill them. Bullets cost a lot of money, so oftentimes they were beaten to death or macheted to death. Sometimes in a single day, as 50 indigenous Americans were murdered by white settlers. This is 1850. Okay, so 1850, it's a little bit ago. Let's move forward. 1944 to 1986, on Native American land, the U.S. government paid indigenous Americans to go mine uranium without any protective equipment, and they did not inform the Native Americans what scientists did know that uranium was highly radioactive. This, of course, continued the wholesale genocide of Native Americans and their families lost family members due to radioactive poisoning, radiation poisoning. As late as 1986, this was still ongoing. That's just a few decades ago. Something around 98 to 99% of all Native Americans were slaughtered in a slow-moving genocide that took place over centuries. Some historians claim that Adolf Hitler took notes on the American genocide of indigenous Americans to facilitate his slaughter of Jews and other undesirable types in Europe. An institution called the IHS, or the Indian Health Services, forcibly sterilized 25 to 50 percent of all indigenous females from 1970 to 1976. Again, very recently. The point here being, the United States likes to look around the world and say, oh, naughty, naughty human rights. What about the 15 million-ish indigenous Native Americans that were wholesale slaughtered with historical evidence everywhere as recently as just a couple of decades ago? This was still ongoing. As an American, it's offensive to me and to millions of other Americans as well that the United States goes around the world saying, oh, human rights, human rights, when the United States still to this day, not just including indigenous Americans, has a very, very, very problematic and flawed record on human rights. It doesn't seem to a rational person, to a rational educated person, that the United States government has any ground to stand on vis-a-vis -vis telling other nations how they should conduct their affairs vis-a-vis -vis human rights when the United States has again and again and again and again against multiple races, religious groups, and other minority groups murdered in literally the millions of people. This is Shangguan Jiawen. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.